Greetings, um, peeps. I hope you're doing well. I am coming at you the day after my surgery, um, which I, I look like Frankenstein. Look, want to see my scar? I look like Frankenstein or the Bride of Chucky or some such. It hurts like crap, but I'm so grateful. Honestly, um, my I just found out that two of my really good friends, I haven't talked to them in a while, but they're still very good friends of mine, um, completely unrelated. One had a stroke, and um, they ended up having to do a craniotomy on her um, while she was... Um, preparing to sing, she suffered a stroke. Um, and then another one, he was preparing a pool pump or something and it exploded in his face and he had to be rushed to the hospital. And I believe, well, yeah, I don't want to speculate about what, what the treatment is, but like, it's all very major stuff. And it got me to thinking, um, it's the holiday week. We're all about to enjoying, you know, some good food and, and, and fun and some of you all are traveling and, you know, it's, it's it's a bunch of stuff going on. And just quickly, just very briefly, I was sitting here a second ago and was very tempted to kind of fret my life and just fret what's going on, fret my surgery, fret, like, you know, I was just feeling bad about it. like, hmm, you know, and honestly, I had to re remember the goodness of God in my life and how just, just a bit ago, um, doctors were telling my parents to get ready to say goodbye to me because they did not, they did not think I was going to live. And now we're faced, I'm faced with my friends. Um, one will definitely um, be okay, but his quality of life will be very, very different. My friend Ashley, God only knows the prognosis. Um, the best outcome, even with the best outcome, she still suffered a craniotomy, which is where they have to remove parts of your skull for brain surgery. Um, so, you know, things are just hard for those families, for their families. Just going to be different um, one way or the other. And I was sitting here and I started to kind of be like, hmm, you know, thinking about what, what I thought that my life was going to look like and what others thought that my life was going to look like, um, where I was going to be, what I was going to be doing, and how I'm basically doing none of that and have done none of that. And very quickly... I started to, you know, mope and just be like, hmm. I find myself in the middle as my sweet Beth Moore, when they had the benefit concert for me, the gathering they called it, um, she preached about being in the middle where you have decided to follow God, follow his plan, follow his, his purpose for your life. And you look up and you're in a really hard place. So what I want to do is speak to those of you who find in the middle of all this frivolity and all of this, you know, good food we're about to have and all of the, all of the, all of the stuff, excuse me, excuse my little stammer. Um, and that's new, you know, having had surgery, the way that I speak sometimes is a little bit off or gets caught up. And that's new for me. Um, but I want to speak to those of you who are in the middle of all this jolly jolly. And look up and you're like, yo, things are hard. Things are, things are crap. <laughs> this is crap. I mean, I'm happy with this crap. I'm gonna, I don't want to take away from what you feel because your feelings are real. And you deserve to feel that way. And... Nobody knows your life story the way that you do. Um, so things might have looked like they were going one way and then they went a completely different way. And now you are living in the aftermath of all of that. That is very real. 
and the pain is real. The all of, all of the emotion behind it is very very real. But what I want to offer you is the opportunity to instead of just viewing your circumstances through the lens of pain and um, disappointment or whatever, um, to look upon your circumstances with gratitude because it is a choice. It is a choice and it's a hard one. I don't I don't want you to think that you have to be blissfully unaware or act like things are not the way that they are because they are. Um, things suck sometimes. Look, I'm grateful, but I look like a whole um, Bride of Frankenstein. <laughs> I look like, I mean, I'm a transformer. I'm a Decepticon. Up under all of this... Up under all this beauty. <laughs> I couldn't even say it. Up under all of this. It's hardware. I'm an entire Best Buy. Okay? I'm a whole Circuit City. <laughs> we're, we're service is state of the art. Right here. There's a lot going on. And such is life. There is much going on and there's much to be upset about there's much to fret about there's much to be in your feelings about but if you really really think about it there's also much to be grateful for and I'm not asking you excuse me I just saw one of my hairs doing something very dumb um I'm not asking you to act like everything is perfect because it's not it's just not. Things can always be better. Be better. Um, even the way that I just stammered right there is indicative of some of what I've been through, which was not predicted. Now listen, um, I went through something extremely hard. I was almost dead. I was. The doctors were telling my parents to say their final goodbyes because I was not expected to make it. A little bit later, um, I was told by my doctor that I will make a full recovery and that I probably won't even remember most of the hardship that I've experienced over the past couple of years. That is wonderful. But what I've been through is also extremely hard. And that's real. I don't know where I'll wind up with all the the mess. I don't know what I will forgetting what I will remember. I like to joke and be like, oh, buddy, I'm going to remember. But I, I don't know. My mom tells me certain things that I said or did right now. Um, she tells me things that I did when I was, you know, in surgery or in the hospital. And I have no memory of it whatsoever. I know it to be true because she said it a few times. But I don't know it to be true because I recall it. Which is indicative of my memory having suffered, um, the cerebellum having suffered. And so that's just what it is. Um, your feelings are real. Your emotions are real. Your experiences, all very, very real. But also, what's real is the goodness of God in your life and the fact that you get to live to see another day that others did not get that chance because their time was up or because of decisions they made that concluded their time. Either way, you're still here to fight. You're still here to live. You're still here to bring joy and to be joyful. And sometimes it is a very conscientious decision. You know what I'm saying? Like sometimes it's not easy to be grateful about what you've got and what's going on. Sometimes things are very hard. Listen, what I experienced as a result of the stroke, what I experienced and what I am experiencing as a re result of the stroke that I suffered, it's crap sometimes. I mean, gosh, it sucks. 
it has sucked and sometimes it still really, really sucks. But also what I've experienced is the handiwork and the miraculous um, working power of God. And so I'm choosing to not ignore the hard stuff because you can't. The hard stuff is actually just going to be there. But what isn't guaranteed to be there is my perspective and my choice to say, yeah, that sucks. It was hard. But look what God did. Look that I'm still here. I still get, get to be here to raise my daughter. I still get to be here to rejuvenate my voice and to sing it again. I still get to be here to speak and tell my story. I still get to be here and have really painful surgery and look like Frankenstein or the Bride of Chucky. <laughs> I still get to be here one way or the other. You know what I'm saying? Life is a gift. Life is a gift. And um, I recall that when I was recuperating, I went through, I mean, a few dark seasons. But my girl, Jahada, wrote um, on a dry erase board, a small dry erase board, and put it in, I was staying at her house. She put it in the room that I was in. And it said that life is a gift. And at some times, that used to really upset me because it did not feel like I was that like I was had been given a gift. It did not feel it feel like I was living through anything that was joyful. And it didn't feel like I had much to be grateful or joyful about. Honestly. It was hard. Oh gosh. Having to learn how to walk, how to talk, how to potty. I mean, how to just do basic human stuff all over again in my 40s was not what I thought I would be doing with my life. It was hard. It was hard. Um, but her words helped me to recall that life was a gift. And so what I want to do is remind you, yes, life can be hard. Yes, life is hard. Yes, there are things that are desirable in your life right now. Um, everything is not going your way. Everything has not gone your way. There's much to change. But you still get the, cha the chance, excuse me, for things to change. You still get the chance to be a blessing to those around you. And to be blessed by those around you. You get a chance to love and be loved. You get a chance to raise your kids. You get a chance to fuss and cuss. You get a chance. You get a chance. And that's that. So, while we are celebrating Independence Day, um, we are also celebrating our independence in a way that we get a chance to, to live and do some things for ourselves and for those we love. But we also get a chance to celebrate our dependence on God and what he's done in our lives. And for where we are right now, even though it may not exactly be what you want, where you want it to be and how you wanted things to look, we get to celebrate. So with that in mind, happy Independence Day, peeps.